live and good to go. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Paul's. Thank you for joining us here today. Would you please rise and join us for a little intro music here? One, two, three. Joyful and triumphant Come ye, oh come ye to Bethlehem Come and behold him Born the king of angels Oh come let us adore him Oh come let us adore him Oh come let us adore him the Lord. Sing choirs of angels, sing in exaltation, or oh, sing all ye citizens of heaven above. God, oh, glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Us to thee be all glory given. A word of the Father now in flesh appearing. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Oh, come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Amen. You could be seated. Well, good morning and uh, welcome to St. Paul's. For those of you who I haven't met, my name is Keith and uh, just the, really, really great to be worshiping here with you this morning. And uh, please know those are not just empty words. It really is. As I was setting up this morning, I was just reminded last year how we had to lead worship to an empty room and uh, it just it wasn't fun. So it's great to have you guys here. It's uh, great to see faces and uh, we're, we're just really appreciative to be worshiping here with you this morning. And thank you to all of you who are also joining in live stream. Uh, if you have any questions about today's service or anything that's going on here at St. Paul's, Pastor Ryan and I would love to get to know you better and answer any questions you might have. So feel free to do that today after service or just email us and we'll get together uh, sometime this week. Well, on your way in, everyone should have got uh, some message notes and maybe a connection card. They might also have been on your tables as you came in today. If you don't mind pulling them out at this time, that'd be very helpful. Uh, today, Pastor Ryan is going to be continuing his series, The Sounding Joy, Part 2. Uh, today's song that we're, or carol that we're going to be reflect, reflecting on is God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. So we look forward to hearing about that in a few moments. But um, before we do, we, we will have some more worship music and also a couple quick announcements from today. Our first announcement uh, is about, it's actually more of an update than an announcement. It's about our Angel Tree Ministry. Uh, first of all, thank you so much to all of you who ha helped uh, wrap gifts, who purchase gifts, who deliver, are continuing to deliver the gifts this, this, morning, uh, this week. Uh, we are just really, really appreciative for all the people who stepped up. This is the first time uh, we're working with the Angel Tree Ministry, and so far it's, uh, we've gotten really good feedback, and uh, just really appreciate uh, everyone who's helped out with that. Um, this past week, we uh, also, uh, like as you see in the pictures, were able to wrap the gifts after service, and we also uh, took the study bags that we made last week and, and handed them out to UConn students on campus. 
to uh, some of our ministry groups, crew, and athletes in action. And also, we just handed them out to random students who absolutely loved getting them. So again, thank you for those of you who are here to help build them. And also, thank you to anyone who's uh, ever given to St. Paul's. For those who might be new to our community, 10% of everything that we receive from our offerings and tithes go back out into the local and global communities and make things like the last week possible. So they were, uh, we used those offerings to, to purchase the items for study bags and things like that. So thank you very, very much. Do you play drums? Do you play bass? Maybe. <laughs> if there are some secret bass or drum players in our community, we would love to hear about uh, that, and Steve would love to get to uh, know you. Um, if you don't mind, send him an email this week, steven at stpaulswire.org. You can also just grab him after service, let him know that you might have some interest in uh, helping out with the worship team and filling in some needs for uh, drums and bass. Uh, the next announcement is that we, are, as a church, recognize the need for uh, just how hard this past year has been, especially around the holiday season, too. Sometimes um, things can get really, really tough, and uh, we recognize that. So uh, we're offering free uh, counseling. We've partnered together with a Christian counselor, Regeneration Therapy. If uh, that's something that you'd like to know more about or look into, please feel free to email Pastor Ryan. He could give you some more information on that. We would love to pay for the first three sessions uh, for, for you to go through that and possibly even more beyond that. So um, know that that's there if you need it. Our next announcement is uh, from the outreach team. We, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Martha Neeson has talked about this at past uh, membership meetings, but for those of you who might not have been here for that, uh, we, we've started partnering with someone uh, named Eli Bondi. From, um, uh, he's from Burkina Faso in West Africa. Eli is a really good friend of Martha, and he's also, uh, who is a, Martha is a member of our St. Paul's uh, outreach team and a member of our community. A recent report from Eli informed us about some of the difficulties they are facing. Jihadists have been active in the area, attacking and uh, killing people in villages and targeting pastors and teachers. This year there was insufficient rain, causing the price of grain to skyrocket. In addition, there are many refugees and displaced people struggling to survive in and around the capital, where Eli and his mission are based. Eli's ministry is focused on reaching out to these refugees and displaced people, providing them with food and sharing the gospel. So we're asking you to partner with St. Paul's. We are a partner with Eli, and we're going to be sending him a generous donation this week. And uh, we're also asking if some of you would like to help out with that as well. There's instructions in your, uh, on your message notes of how you can give an offering. Um, the, the announcement I just made is also in the What's Happening email. If you want to go back and reread re that announcement, you could do that. Um, and uh, we just encourage you to help Eli out and also just keep him in your prayers this week um, as, again, they're going through some really tough stuff out there in uh, Burkina Faso. And then uh, our final announcement is um, this Friday, December 24th, Christmas Eve, we'll be having our annual Christmas Eve service right here at 5 p.m. Well, everyone is invited. We hope you could join us. Uh, we'll also be providing it on live stream as we have uh, most of our other services and uh, just a Friendly reminder, we will not be having service this Sunday. Uh, rather, uh, we'll be worshiping this week on Christmas Eve on Friday. So lots going on here around St. Paul's. And uh, if, again, if you have any questions and want to get more connected, uh, please feel free to do that. One great way to do that is by filling out one of the connection cards that are on your table. We ask everyone every week to fill one of those out. Just a great way to get into our database. We'll send you an email once a week with our uh, announcements and our updates and events going on, not only at St. Paul's, but also at other local churches and things around the area. And uh, we promise we won't spam you. And then there's also a place on the connection card where you could put any interest you might have, uh, whether it be membership, volunteering here, um, small groups, all kinds of things that are going on. So be encouraged to do that. For those of you who put that you're interested in help serving somewhere, uh, we haven't forgotten about you. Uh, we are going to be having a volunteer fair uh, once in January in the new year, so that'll be a great way to learn about some of the ministries and things that you could be helping out here on Sunday mornings, because uh, we could certainly use it, and uh, we would love to get you guys connected in that way as well. So that'll be coming soon. Would you uh, please rise for today's invocation prayer, and then remain standing for worship. This week's prayer comes from Christina Rossetti. O oh Lord, in whom is our hope? Remove far from us, we pray, empty hopes and presumptuous confidence. Make our hearts so right with your most holy and loving heart that hoping in you we may do good until that day when faith and hope will be abolished by sight and possession 
and love shall be all in all. Amen. You call me out upon the waters the great unknown where feet may fail there I find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand and I will call upon your name above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are Bounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you never failed, and you won't start now. Call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine borders and you walk upon the waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever wander my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior really me where my trust is without borders Above the waves 
rise When oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine God rest ye merry gentlemen Let nothing you dismay Remember Christ our Savior Was born on Christmas Day To save us all from Satan's power We had gone astray Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy From God our Heavenly Father A blessed angel came and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same How that in Bethlehem was born Son of God by name Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Fear not, then said the angel Let nothing you affright this day is born a Savior of a poor virgin bright To free all those who trust in Him Satan's power and might Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy God rest ye merry gentlemen Let nothing you dismay Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day To save us all from Satan's power We had gone astray Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Good morning. So this is our third week in our Sounding Joy Part 2 series, where we're listening closely to the songs of Christmas and reflecting on their meaning and significance. And uh, the song that we're doing this morning, as Keith said earlier, and as you just heard, is God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. Sometimes um, it's titled God Rest You, Merry Gentlemen, uh, which is definitely... A classic. It goes way back. I remember uh, two years ago I wanted to do this one when we did Sounding, Sounding Joy Part 1, but I gave up because I could not find a standard definitive version of God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. Um, some verses had, uh, or some versions had verses that other ones didn't. I found that there are about eight verses that appear in various versions, but there are variations on all eight of those verses, and they appear in different orders, in different variations of the orders in different versions. And so I just kind of threw up my hands and gave up because I was like, I don't even know for sure what I would be talking about. What is the standard definition uh, of this song? And the biggest reason for that inconsistency is because God Rest You Merry Gentlemen is really old. Um, there's no definitive comp composition or composer of God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. Uh, we subscribe to a service called Song Select that a lot of churches use, which is a database of, of songs, uh, copyrighted songs that churches can use in their services. 
And if you look up God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, it just mysteriously says under composer, unknown. Nobody knows. The earliest confirmed version of the lyrics of this song that I found was from the 1650s, so about 370 years ago. And it was found in a handwritten manuscript of a book of poems. And the book of poems was associated with uh, a group of Catholic families in the parish of, and I'm not making this up, hopefully I can say this correctly, Wooten Wawen of Warwickshire, <laughs> which is in central England. And uh, this is the first verse of this poem from the 1650s manuscript. Sit, yo merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay, for Jesus Christ is born. To save our souls from Satan's power, when as we run astray, O tidings of comfort and joy, to save our souls from Satan, when we, as we run away, O tidings of comfort and joy. Now, of course, that's not exactly the first verse of God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. I don't know exactly what sit yo means, but I assume it means something like God Rest Ye Merry. Um, but clearly, this is an early version of what came to be known as God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. And remember how I said that as I looked up various versions of this song uh, over the centuries, I was frustrated because there's different combinations of verses, but I said that there are eight possible verses. Well, guess what? This 1650s manuscript contains early versions of all eight of those verses. Um, and of course, they're all a little bit different from what we know, but it's clearly the seed version is there. For example, the, the second uh, verse in the poem says, in Bethlehem, sweet jury, this blessed babe was found. Uh, and of course, that sounds a lot like what we often sing in our uh, one verse of the song, in Bethlehem in Israel, this blessed babe was born. So we have evidence that some form of the lyrics to this song goes back for a very long time, at least 370 years. So what about the music? Well, the earliest proof I found of the combination of this music with these lyrics is from the mid-1700s. A composer named James Nares wrote down the words and music to this song, so it's handwritten, and it's, he wrote it under the title, The Old Christmas Carol. So even in the 1750s, this combination was considered old. So the song is old, and that's probably obvious just from that opening line, right? God rest ye merry gentlemen. Have you guys ever thought about that line at all? A comma must belong in there somewhere, right? But... But where? Are we talking to God? Are we talking to the gentlemen? Are the gentlemen merry? Or are we telling them to be merry? Or are we concerned because they're a little too merry and they need to give it a rest? <laughs> like, what is going on here? <laughs> and I genuinely wasn't sure myself uh, when I started to look into the song. Well, there is a comma that belongs there, and it belongs between Mary and gentlemen. A lot of people hear this and they think it's, God rest ye, Mary gentlemen, but it's, God rest ye, Mary gentlemen. So the gentlemen are the ones being addressed, and that's probably obvious from the second line, let nothing you dismay. God's not the one who needs to be told, don't be dismayed, right? It's people. So clearly the, uh, the audience is the gentleman. And I know the fact that it's exclusively gentlemen that are being addressed is archaic. Um, I, actually, I wouldn't say that the song intends to only address gentlemen. It's a, kind of like when we refer to humanity as mankind. Um, clearly this is for everybody. And I know the language is kind of archaic. That's that's unfortunate. If it helps at all, you can think of gentlemen as like 
the ancient, not ancient, but the 17th century version of you guys, right? You know, if we talk to a crowd of mixed gender and we say, hey, all you guys, you know, people don't assume we're only talking about the men. Uh, but that still leaves us with the question, what are the gentlemen being told to do? Right? God rest ye Mary. What does that mean? Well, the word rest is being used there in a way that we don't use it today. It means something like keep you. So what this is saying is something like, may God keep you happy, all you guys. <laughs> the expression, God rest you Mary, uh, it actually goes all the way back to 1534, at least, according to the Oxford English Dictionary. So when we sing these words, we are singing a old-fashioned 500-plus-year-old blessing. God keep you happy, all of you. God give you peace. God give you joy. God rest you merry. Do you feel merry this time of year? I know that for a lot of people, all this focus on being happy and being merry actually has a, a reverse effect this time of year. You know, Christmas can be really the hardest time of the year for some people. It's a time when we can feel the absence of loved ones more acutely. If you have a loved one that's passed away, you tend to feel that more at Christmas. Uh, if you have a loved one who is deployed or far away and you can't be with them, uh, it can be a lot harder at Christmas. If you have a loved one that for some reason you've become estranged from, Christmas can really, really hurt. And, and then there's the fact that, you know, some of us have really positive memories of Christmas, but then our present experience never seems to live up to those, those memories from the past. And so Christmas can leave us feeling the opposite of merry, depressed. And then, of course, there's the added stress of getting all the gifts and making sure that everything seems perfect and nothing ever is perfect, right? Uh, so, so Christmas, ironically, is a time when a lot of people don't feel so merry. But what I want us to notice is that God resting merry gentlemen doesn't just tell us to be merry, right? It tells us why we should be merry. And it's not because life is easy or because everyone we love is still with us to celebrate around the tree. Uh, it's, uh, it's not because Santa's on his way and we got plenty of figgy pudding. If those were the reasons, then I don't think this song would have caught on in 18th century London. Uh, did you guys know that life expectancy, when you were born, in the late 1700s in London, was 23. And, you know, that's, I don't want you to get the wrong impression. That doesn't mean that once you reach 23, people just expect it. Well, you're about done. Um, plenty of people lived into their, into their 60s and 70s and even some people into their 80s. But the average was so low because so many people died as infants or as children. So you can imagine at Christmas how acutely that loss might be felt, right? And yet, they sang out in the London streets according to a Christmas carol, Scrooge, right? They sang out, God rest you merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay, be merry. Why? Because Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we had gone astray. Two weeks ago, we talked a bit about Satan's power, which leads us astray. We looked at the story of Adam and Eve. And remember, Satan, who was represented by a, a serpent in that story, led Adam and Eve to violate God's only prohibition. Don't eat from that one tree. And you, you remember how the serpent convinced Eve to do that, right? By leading her to think 
that God was trying to withhold something good from her by leading her to think that God was selfish and that he didn't have her best interests in mind. And that's the same way that Satan's power works today. He leads us to think that God's not really good and to think that we can find what we really need and want in something or someone other than him, other than God. And then that deception leads us to sin. And sin leads to brokenness in our lives, brokenness in our relationships. And it leads to shame and hiding and darkness. And ultimately, it leads to death. But way back in that first story of the Bible, God makes a promise. We looked at that promise in detail two weeks ago. It's a strange, cryptic promise. But what God says is that the serpent, the devil, Satan, he's going to be humiliated. He's going to be defeated. His hold on humanity is going to be broken. And it's a little cryptic how that's going to happen. But we're told that one day, a descendant is going to be born, a seed of the woman. And that descendant is going to crush Satan, crush the devil. He's going to have to suffer in the process, but he will crush him. And of course, God Rest You Mary, Gentlemen, is a song that celebrates that that descendant, that promised seed of the woman, born of a virgin, was born on the day we remember as Christmas. He came to save us all from Satan's power, to save us from that power that leads us to doubt the goodness of God, that power that leads us to shame and darkness, and hiding, and death. He didn't fall for Satan's deception. So he didn't sin. And because he didn't sin, death couldn't keep its hold on him. When he died, he came back. We might say that he defeated the three main sources of our greatest problems, right? The devil, sin, and death. So why should we rest Mary at Christmas? Even when there's so much wrong with the world. Because through Jesus we have hope that those three main sources of our biggest problems have been defeated by the one who was born on Christmas. There is someone who is stronger than the serpent. Someone who is stronger than our sin. Someone who is stronger than death itself. And he tells us that if we follow and trust him, we will share in his victory over all those things. That's what should keep us merry. As God, rest you merry gentlemen, moves through its verses and recounts the story of Jesus' birth, it keeps returning to that refrain, O tidings of comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Which, of course, is the same thing as God rest you merry. May you have peace. May you have joy. Because of the Savior's birth. Let's look at the Bible passage where these tidings of comfort and joy are first given. Um, You can open up to Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 8, if you want to follow along in your own Bible. Luke 2, verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. If you're having trouble at all feeling the comfort and joy in these tidings, I'd like to point out a couple things that might not be obvious to us from our vantage point as 21st century Americans. 
<clears throat> when this announcement was made, it was made, of course, in a Jewish region of the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire was ruled by the emperor, a guy known as Caesar Augustus. And what you might not know is that Caesar Augustus was celebrated as savior and as lord. And his reign was said to be a gospel, good news, that brought peace on earth. And so when the angels make this announcement to the shepherds, part of what the shepherds are hearing is Caesar isn't the true king. The true king of creation has been born. So there's a little bit of a subversive political element to what the angels were saying here. It uses the language of the empire and then says, actually, they aren't really the ones in charge. But there's a few things that are incredibly ironic about this royal announcement. Look at this. A savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the King, the Lord, the true Caesar. You will find him wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. In other words, a king far greater than Caesar has been born. You will find him lying in a food trough for animals. What? You hear how ironic that is? That's like saying you will find the greatest in the position of the least. The king is not born into a state of privilege and power and wealth, but into the humblest of circumstances. This is upside down. It's backwards. And then there's also an irony to who is given this message first. You know, who are the people that get the message first, besides Mary and Joseph, who are let in on what's going on here. Shepherds. Now, most of our associations with shepherds are really positive, right? Especially if we've grown up in the church, because we know that Jesus identifies as our shepherd. Um, but the reality was that at that time, shepherds were not respected. Um, the first time I heard that, I thought, is that really true? That sounds like something that somebody might just be making up just to, you know, make the story, I don't know, twisted in a certain way to get their point across. But I found that in multiple sources, that for whatever reason, shepherds were just, they are kind of looked down on. And part of the reason might have been because the kind of work that they did prevented them from participating in religious activities, in, in ceremony, in going to the synagogue, because when you have to always make sure that your sheep aren't wandering away, uh, you can't go into to town and participate in the church of the time, right? So that might be part of, of why shepherds were looked down on. They were, they were seen as kind of the opposite of holy men, just worldly guys. And yet... Of all the people that the angels could have appeared to, to make this royal announcement, they appear to lowly shepherds. God sends them to lowly shepherds. So what does all that tell us? Why should this give us comfort and joy? Because it tells us that the true king of creation the one who came to crush the serpent is not like the kings of the world. Right? The, the kings of the world, they're not usually humble. But he's humble. He values the lowly of society. He's even willing to appear dishonorable. right? He's obviously not concerned with wealth and luxury. That's not his priority. This is what the true king of creation is like, the true Caesar. Now you might ask, if Jesus really is the king of all creation, then why isn't that more obvious? If he really is the highest authority, the authority over all other authorities on earth, why doesn't everyone realize that? 
Why does it sometimes feel like Jesus isn't really the one in charge? Well, if any of us are asking that, I think we need to remember something that the Christmas story reveals, which is that appearances are not always what they seem. Appearances are not always what they seem. You know, if we did not know the Christmas story, we would never expect God to be born as a human being, laid in a feeding trough for animals, in some backwater town, right? We would expect God to manifest his power in some sort of blinding, incredible way in some great city, right? In a, in a, in a temple or in a palace. That's what we would expect. But the Christmas story tells us that the true king of creation doesn't work the way that we usually expect. He exercises his power in ways that seem strange to us because the true king of creation acts out of love. Acts of love are more powerful than, it, than anything, but on the surface, they can appear as weakness. So the Christmas story should help us to see that even though there are times where it feels like Jesus isn't really the king, that Jesus isn't really in charge, that doesn't mean he isn't. He's still in charge. He's still at work. He's still more powerful than anything or anyone. But he often exercises his power in ways that we would not expect. He chooses to appear in the mangers of this world in the humble places, in humble hearts. Unlike the kings of the world who are so, so often directed by love of money, love of power, desire for approval, Jesus, the true king, is directed by righteousness and love. And even though his reign might seem hidden right now, the promise is one day it will be very evident to all that he is the king. And he will reign in righteousness and love, forever and ever. And that is what should keep us merry. Let's pray. Lord, I do pray that this Christmas we would experience joy. And not a, a shallow, superficial joy, but the kind of joy that comes from realizing what this Christmas story reveals to us that you are the true king of all, and that you are good, that you can be trusted. Lord, I pray that as we put our faith and our hope in you, uh, that you would fill us with your tidings of comfort and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
the king whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh. Come, peasant king, to own him. The king of kings, salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ the king, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. The babe, the son of Mary This, this is Christ the King Whom shepherds guard and angels sing Haste, haste to bring him thought The babe, the son of Mary Now is the point in our service where we continue our worship through the celebration of the Lord's Supper and the giving of tithes and offerings. Here at St. Paul's, the communion table is open to anybody who has put their faith in Jesus. And uh, if you're not sure if you've done that or what that means and you'd like to know more, uh, I encourage you to set up a time to meet with me or Keith. We would love to talk about that with you. Um, and if you feel like today is the first day that you want to express that you, you're putting your faith in Jesus, uh, you're welcome to come to this table as a way of expressing that. Um, we are uh, now inviting everyone to come forward to receive communion. Uh, we're still doing individual cups because of COVID. Uh, I'll be masked as you come forward. And I'll invite you to receive the elements. You can take one of the cups, and then you can take it back to your seat and receive it when you feel uh, ready to do so. We also want to encourage you, as you come forward, to place your connection cards with any prayer requests you might have uh, in the basket underneath the table here. Uh, and also, if you have any offerings that you are led to give, uh, we invite you to place them in that basket as well. Uh, we encourage you to remember that we are completely an independent congregation that is supported um, by your offerings, and our, our pledge is to steward uh, those offerings in a way that honors God and honors the spirit in which you, you gave them. Now, I don't know um, what exactly your experience with communion has been like over the course of your life, um, I know I've heard a lot of people talk about how when they received communion, it always felt like it was a very somber time, you know, where uh, they felt like they needed to feel grief over their sin. And I definitely think that there is a place for that. And there are times where we need to recognize the weight of our sin and recognize that our only hope uh, for for forgiveness is through Jesus and what Jesus has done. That's absolutely true. But this is a celebration. And, you know, as we sang this morning, God rest you merry, God keep you happy, all you guys. This is one of the ways that God keeps us happy. One of the ways that he wants to keep us happy is by reminding us that he has done everything that is necessary to defeat the three things that are the source of our biggest problems, the devil, sin, and death. And so as we come forward, I want us to think about God wants to keep me merry, and this is one of the ways that he does it. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you declare the Lord's death until he comes again. So as you feel called and as you feel led, come and receive God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Fails, never gives 
up Then runs out on me Your love never fails Never gives up Never runs out on me Your love so much for being with us here today. We invite you to rise and join us for a closing song. Merry Christmas, everyone. sang to hail our Savior's birth. The world lay in utter darkness, clung to prophecies of old. Sees. And glory in the highest, and peace upon the earth. Shepherds stare, the angels sang, the hail our Savior's birth. so much for being here today. Don't forget, uh, 5 p.m. Christmas Eve service here, no service on Sunday. Let's say our benediction. While our service here has now ended, our worship has not ended because our worship never ends. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord and to love and serve his people. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>